The Gremlin Street Gang is responsible for hundreds of violent crimes, murders, armed robberies, witness intimidation, burglaries, drug trafficking, extortion, and brutal beatings. We've arrested 10 of these thugs and have warrants on seven more. Every one of these animals is most definitely armed and dangerous. Darren Carter, Aaron Carter, Travis Cooper, Cody Guidry, Jaron Diggs, Kirkland Demache, and Jonathan Landry. We have felony warrants for your arrest. You will be hunted, you will be tracked, and if you raise your weapon to a man like me, we'll return fire with superior fire. Darren Carter, you think men like these are afraid of an uneducated 125 pound punk like you that's never won a fair fight in your life and holds your gun sideways? Young man, I'll meet you on solid ground anytime, anywhere, light or heavy. Makes no difference to me. You won't walk away. Look at you. Men like us, son, we do dumbbell presses with weights bigger than you. And the convicts in jail, most of those men are good people who just found themselves crossed with the law. They're not evil, and they don't respect you or any punk like you. They'll toss you around like a rag doll. I encourage every citizen watching this to look into your own heart and find the American courage that conquers all evil. I implore you to listen to this message and stand up. Take back your streets. Take back your country. Come forward with information about these heathens that have terrorized your community. And for those who would use this message as a way to create false racial division in our country, take a close look behind me. Standing next to every cop is a leader of our black community. This is not about race. It's about right versus wrong. One last message to the gremlins. You don't like the things I've told you tonight? I got one thing to say. I'm easy to find. The Mr. Higgins is recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. My, my, my. Bless you, sir. My, my, my. My colleagues across the aisle are going to find themselves in a bind this year because we're going to investigate. We're going to investigate what exactly did happen leading up to January the 6th. You'd have had to be living under a rock in America to not know that there was potential for violence, riot, and mob behavior on January the 6th. Anybody with an ounce of common sense in any kind of connection to the street knew that that was a potential. The United States Capitol Police received intelligence from numerous law enforcement and intelligence services, which clearly indicated the likely, a likelihood of violence on January 6th, and they failed to adequately prepare. Let's look at why. Mayor Browser. My goodness. December 31st, she had one tone when she requested the cooperation of the D.C. National Guard. You were criticized for not responding more quickly to the Proud uh, Boys activity. I presume you'll be quick to respond, as you said previously. But again, do you expect the president to be on the streets of Washington? Uh, we're not sure whether or not the president will be on the streets of Washington. And, and with, with respect to any particular group, uh, it really doesn't matter to me which group or which individuals. Uh, what we are particularly focused on is individuals that are engaged in violent behavior, whoever they might be. As a chain of command, it be begins with a request from the mayor. The mayor made that request on December 31st. The, the president authorized it on January the 3rd, but on January the 5th, Mayor Browse of D.C., who's deeply connected with my Democratic co colleagues here in this body, she had a change of heart, sent out a letter. We don't want any National Guardsmen here. I got National Guardsmen just for traffic control, wearing safety vests, unarmed, working traffic control and, 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 and crowd control here and there in the city. Certainly not pre-deployed pre to react and respond quickly to the kind of thing that everybody knew was a potential to happen on January the 6th. So what happened? 
were there communications between my colleagues and the Democratic Party and their friend, the mayor of D.C., to have that change of heart the day before January the 6th? We're going to find out. I promise you. Director Ray, will you explain to my colleagues what in law enforcement, what a show of force deterrence is, how meaningful it is, and how effective it is as we deal with potential for violence, mob behavior, rioting, uh, violent protest, when things can get out of hand and we know it because of our intel, we have a show of force. Would you explain that in generality, sir? I realize you cannot discuss the case. Share with America briefly how effective the show of force is. Well, well, Congressman, with the with the caveat up front that the FBI, of course, doesn't do crowd control. Right, but you're my right. thin blue line brother on this panel because the chief but couldn't I, come. For some reason, I, the chief we invited is not here. So, so you're the man on the panel with law enforcement experience. Just share with my colleagues in America just how effective show of force is as a deterrent if you're facing potential violence. Do you agree with that assessment or not, good sir? My, my understanding is that the, a visible show of strength uh, and security is a very, very significant factor. A very significant factor. I concur. Why do you think, America, why do you think that show of force was canceled the day before January the 6th? I promise you we're going to find out. We will know exactly what happened. And some in this body are not going to like it because there was, there was plenty of intel out there across the country. Many, many field agents had turned in reports at the federal level, local law enforcement. The, the boots on the ground knew that there was potential for violence in a mob, born a protest nation that had been locked out of its capital for a year. There was potential. It needed to be controlled. Show of force is a peaceful deterrent. Who could possibly benefit? Let the world ask that question. Who could possibly benefit from the removal of a show of force deterrence on the eve of, of January the 6th? I'll leave America with that cliffhanger. Madam Chair, I yield. Uh, in terms of crowd size, uh, again, we don't know what the crowd size uh, will be. Uh, we certainly anticipate, as we've seen over the course of the last, uh, the last two uh, demonstrations, that there have been increased uh, crowd sizes. Some of our intelligence certainly suggests uh, that it will be an increased crowd, and we are obviously preparing for that. Um, but we also have to know that we have a serious threat uh, to our democracy right now. Um, that the will of American people through a fair and just election um, is being questioned and violence is being incited. Uh, and that leaves the men and women who have sworn an oath to protect public safety uh, in a very difficult position. The men and women of the Metropolitan Police Department, the men and women, the men and women, United States Park Police, United States Capitol Police, uh, the Secret Service are all going to be out uh, to protect um, the First Amendment, but also to protect people and property. Are we testing these illegal immigrants that are being released into our nation? Are we testing them before or after the, the process? You said they're being tested, that you have a plan in place. We, they, we, most certainly, we most certainly do. There are four ways in which we accomplish uh, the testing. OK, One you're welcome to submit that in writing. I'm reclaiming my time. It, 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 to me, I think the American people are witnessing a, a question dodge. The bottom line is uh, illegal immigrants are being processed at the border and released into our nation that, that have either not been tested or tested positive for COVID. Okay, I don't think I'm going to get a straight answer from you. And I, have, I have another simple question. Do you believe that the policies initiated by President Biden since his inauguration have impacted the issues on the southern border and increased illegal crossing. Do you believe the cartels were paying attention all last year when then-candidate Biden 
was messaging that he was going to weaken the law enforcement mission, uh, provide some kind of a path towards amnesty or citizenship, uh, process when the, the illegal crossings in a manner that was that was more conducive to their reception in the United States. He messaged that again and again and again. Do you think the cartels heard that? Do you think that maybe has something to do with what we're dealing with right now? Um, well, Congressman, I, I share a background with Ranking Member Katko and Congressman McCall. My goodness gracious. I'm not going to get a yes or no out of you. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to su submit my questions in writing because you're not here to answer hard questions, sir. You're here to repeat narratives that's been prepared by staff and attorneys. And I, I, I don't appreciate you dodging these questions. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to yield my time and submit my questions officially in writing to the secretary. And I'm going to expect them to be answered. And if they're not, we're going to make some noise. I'm easy to find. The minimum of the Metropolitan Police Department. You